Hello guys and welcome to another tutorial. So today is kind of an introduction to um, ambient occlusion passes in Blender, how to get it set up. Now this is by no means um, like anything, everything that could be said about ambient occlusion passes. There's a lot more that could be said. I'm just covering the very basics and I'm going to show you how we can enable it and how we can combine this ambient occlusion pass to our normal render um, just to give it a bit more depth and I'm going to show you how to add this multiply node here so you can adjust the amount. So let's get into it and um, I hope you guys have fun. Okay, so first of all, obviously you're gonna need a scene to work with, so go ahead and find something that you like. Um, I'm using Cycles, by the way, um, but this should also work for EV, it should be fine. And what we're gonna be doing is, I'm gonna be going through the steps of enabling the ambient occlusion pass. Now we're all familiar with going to our render tab here, hitting render image, and we get our render. But what we can also do in a Blender is we can go over here to this thing called the view layer properties. If we click on this little tab, it's gonna give us these options here. But the one we're gonna be interested in at the moment is gonna be our passes. And when you open up the passes, you're gonna see all of these different options here, things that can be enabled. And essentially all this is, is when we do eventually go into our compositing workspace up here, it's gonna give us a node. And by default, it's gonna give us this image node for just our regular render that we get. But if you enable some of these passes here, it'll also enable them on that node for you and you can incorporate them in your compositing. In this case, the one we wanna to wanna to be working with is gonna be the ambient occlusion. So if you come down here, under the light part of the passes, you're gonna see these five options here, or these four options. And one we're gonna be enabling is ambient occlusion. Now shadow is very similar. Um, you can also enable that and incorporate it into your, to your workflow, but this time we're just gonna be, for this specific video, focusing on the ambient occlusion. And ambient occlusion is just, like it's, the name says, it, it's just where the ambient lighting and the bounce lighting is occluded. And that's usually gonna be between really tight spaces and crevices and grooves and stuff. And it's just really a good way of adding depth to a scene. So once you've enabled it, we're gonna go to our render button, just like usual, and you're gonna hit render image. So I'm gonna do that now. By the way, this will take a little bit longer than usual because it's actually gonna be rendering two images. So in the background, not only is it rendering this, but it's gonna be rendering that pass. Now, if you also enable more passes, it's also gonna be more time. So if I enable the shadow pass, it'll be three images that's kind of rendering. So let's go render and render image. Okay, so the render is now finished. It just took a little bit longer like I would have expected. So what we're gonna do is once you've rendered that, we're gonna go over to our compositing workspace. So that's gonna be up here. If you can't see the compositing workspace, you can always click on the little plus and then go in here and just get the compositing workspace. So click on the compositing workspace. And if you don't see any nodes here, all you have to simply come up here is click on use nodes and you'll see your node. Now, if you don't see your image in the background here as well, you need to go shift A, you need to go to search and you need to type in viewer, click on the viewer, place it under the composite here and you take the image, which is your, your original main render and you're gonna plug it in here and you should be able to actually see your image now in the background here. If you wanna um, zoom in and out the image, um, you can actually go Alt V and that's gonna zoom in and V is gonna zoom out. So Alt and then Alt V. If you wanna also move around, you can hold in the Alt key and hold in your middle mouse wheel, click on the image and you can also move around. So that could be useful. So I'm just gonna grab this bar here, bring it down, gives us a bit more space. Now essentially um, the composite here is just obviously the final composite. So anything plugged into here is what you're gonna get in your final composited render. The viewer node is essentially just gonna give us the ability to see what's going on in the background here in this compositing workspace. So anyway, let's get into this over here. We can see here we have our image, that's just our normal render. But because we enabled the ambient occlusion over here, we can now also see we have an ambient occlusion pass. If I actually grab this ambient occlusion pass, and I drag it into the viewer here, we can see this is what our ambient occlusion pass looks like. And that's what we wanna mix with this guy here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna search and we're gonna get a mix shader. We're gonna click on this, or I shouldn't say shader, it's a mix node. So we're gonna click on this mix node and then we're gonna take our image here. So the image from our render layer, that's just our normal render. We're gonna plug it into the top socket here of this node. Then we're gonna take this one, the ambient occlusion, and we're gonna make sure to plug it into the bottom socket. So now we can see we have this, um, both of them plugged in here. And when it comes to this guy over here, and we wanna go down to multiply. So we don't want it to be a mix, but rather a multiply. 
And now if we take the image here and we plug it into our viewer to have a look at it, we're going to see our ambient occlusion is now being multiplied over um, this image. Now I don't understand how all the math works, but I do know this is how you set it up. So what we can do now is come over here to the slider, and if it's all the way up to 1, it's going to be quite dark, but if you drag it down a little bit, you can see um, it's not as intense. So I like to go with something like almost just a little bit over halfway, but this is obviously personal preference and you can mess around with it. Also make sure to apply and um, plug this image into the composite as well so you can actually get it in your final render. Now I think this looks pretty cool and you can actually compare it by grabbing this image text, this original image and just quickly plug it into the viewer node and you can see this is what it looks like before. And if we grab this image on the multiply and plug it into the viewer node, you can see this is what it looks like after. And to me, that looks quite cool. I really like the look of this. And you can also um, export these passes individually and then composite them in Photoshop or something or GIMP if you wanted to. But this is just a quick way to do it. And if you're going to do animation, it's really nice having this all in, in one shot. Now, at the moment, if you see, I put this all the way up to one. You can see the sky kind of disappears. And there's a reason for that, because the way I would usually do this is also do, I'd also do an environment pass and a few other passes um, to take care of that issue. And it'd be a little bit more of an advanced setup. But that's not the focus today. I'm just getting you guys introduced to how to set up an ambient occlusion pass. And I hope you guys are able to use this in your workflow. Um, so if this is new to you, definitely go try it out, give it a shot, have some fun, and share it on Instagram, show me what you've made, and um, I'll see you guys later for another tutorial. Um, stay safe.